the first thing you want to do is uh, import the file, take a look at it, decide if you want to do the whole thing. So 25 seconds is a long time, but we're going to do that. Take a quick look. It looks pretty good, but the contrast is a little low. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to add an effect. Um, I use FX Browser from Video Copilot because it's easy, and we're going to add brightness and contrast. Uh, I'm going to leave the brightness alone, but I'm going to jack the contrast up quite a bit to give me more details to track. Okay, once you got that, you're going to pre-compose, you're going to move all attributes and adjust the length, and now we're going to run the camera track on the uh, color corrected and improved shot for tracking. Not improved for look, but improved for tracking. So we'll just let this uh, propagate for a little while and we'll move on to the next step. Uh, I also, sh I should have mentioned this earlier, but I almost always turn on detailed analysis. Uh, slows down the tracking a little bit, but it greatly improves the final result. So we've got a lot of uh, good looking trackers here. What I usually do when it's complicated and I'm not really sure of the ground plane is I uh, just kind of click and drag around tracking markers that I'm pretty sure are on the plane that I want to track. Now I want to grab just around the edge of the pond here. Make sure this uh, we get a, a pretty good target. And then the, the target is, is pretty small. I'm going to hold down the uh, option key and drag to get it bigger and it's uh, it yeah, just about fills the pond. A little fiddling around here. That looks pretty darn good. So when we have a target that looks like it fits the perspective, and that's that's very important. It's got to look like it fits the perspective. You right click and create uh, ground plane and origin. Okay. Once you do that, use the very same target, and you want to create a solid and a camera. Very important that you use a solid because you can see if the track works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, adjust the rotation of this uh, solid. Um, just rotating on just the Z axis. That's going to keep it flat and just spin it around so it kind of fills the pond area there. And uh, maybe I'll scale it up a little bit. Uh, it looks pretty good. That covers most of that. Uh, let's change the blend mode to, oh, I don't know, um, something you see through overlay. Uh, it's a little gross, so let's try, you know, let's try uh, multiply. Multiply will be a good, there we go, and I'm going to create a mask that just outlines the water. I want to make sure that uh, things are pretty easy to track and for these quick masking things, I usually select Roto Bezier instead of the uh, the standard mask because it kind of makes curves and it's a little easier. Uh, the solid kind of goes off the screen here a little bit, so we can just slide down the timeline and then continue uh, drawing a mask, outlining just the water part that uh, it's going to really help us see if this track is good. So, I'll finish up the mask here. Okay, looks pretty good. I got a solid sticking to the water there. And uh, I think I'll duplicate the mask because um, I'm going to add a grid effect on there. I, I like to have a grid on my tracking solid so I can really tell if they stick. It's a lot easier to see what's going on. So, again, FX console... Okay, uh, we'll add a um, grid. So we uh, we uh, fiddling with the uh, grid settings and the blending and and uh, getting it so that it it looks pretty good. Then we uh, open up the um, compositing options for the grid layer, uh, set it to use the mask, and uh, now we've got a 
grid that is sticking really well to the water surface. Now, okay, this tells me we've got a great origin and ground plane, and we've got a good solid track. Okay, so uh, do a little more tweaking. All right, so what's the next step? The next step is to figure out what other pieces of the uh, movie we need to track. So we uh, move down to the uh, footage layer and start select uh, camera tracker and figure out what we want to do. Uh, there's a there's a, up in the corner here. There's a hill that is uh, you know some land that is kind of on an angle. I kind of like to put a tracker up there um, for whatever design purposes. So you can drag a selection around what you think are good spots on that hill. And uh, you just kind of have to fiddle with it. Maybe, uh, I don't know, let's zoom in because it gets hard to see. And uh, see if we can find some, some good tracking points. Watch how they, they move and how they stick. All right, so I think we've, I think we got some stuff here that's gonna work. It does take a little fiddling. So now I've got a, 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 a good solid. Uh, again, I'm gonna do the grid, uh, fiddle with some settings. I uh, don't need a mask this time, but uh, stick it on there and, and make sure that it fits and it, it tracks and uh, I should mention that I've, uh, I've also I always set these solids to guide layers, so they don't uh, they don't render. And now we check and uh, yeah the pond at the bottom of the waterfall is tracking well and the uh, hill that's on an angle that's tracking well. So far we've done a pretty darn good job. So let's figure out uh, what else we want to track. So the, uh, I kind of like the face of the waterfall here, uh, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of moving and, and that kind of stuff that can foul up the trackers. So what's the workflow? Uh, again, we turn to the uh, camera tracker and instead of just drawing a, a, a loop around all those trackers, we find some place where we can see that tr some tracking markers just don't uh, bounce around. So I'm just going to select one at a time. Click on a marker. Click on a marker. This one looks pretty good. And then click on something over on the other side. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe one down here. The target, the, the plane of the target seems to match the waterfall. Uh, that's good. We're going to create another solid. And then we uh, jump through the same hoops with uh, setting it as a guide layer and uh, putting a grid on it, uh, you know, maybe doing some masking or scaling, whatever is required to get this grid uh, to line up with the surface. And again, you only want to uh, rotate the Z axis to get it, uh, get it squared up to the surface. Okay, so a few final adjustments and then we'll run a preview. Okay, so uh, it looks like the preview is uh, looking good. Um, let's uh, find something else. Maybe uh, I'm going to zoom in here, and uh, we're going to track this little house up here in the corner. Um, it's going to be a little difficult because there's not much detail. As we watch the markers on the house, find that there's only one on this house, so we're going to create a solid on that single tracker. And uh, believe it or not, there is a solid there. Uh, it's just it's just really tiny. We can't really see it and uh, can't tell what we're doing. So uh, what we have to do is go up to the layer menu and we're gonna have to increase the size of this solid uh, significantly. So when we get it all uh, figured out, we just make a few little position adjustments. Uh, and then making sure you move only on the uh, X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, kind of get the 
solid lined up with the surface we're trying to track and then we'll run a preview and see how things work. So it looks like it's doing uh, really well. Now we've got multiple solids that we can use to attach other layers, do effects, whatever we need. Um, again, it's very important to keep these as guide layers. Um, so stay in your composition. You can turn them off eventually, but this gives you a really good solid three-dimensional reference that you can use to attach other layers. Okay, so to wrap things up, uh, again, make sure that all of your solids are set to guide layers. Uh, that's pretty easy. You can shift parent any other 3D layer to one of your track solid guide layers to snap that 3D layer into that position and then adjust the offsets or whatever you need to do to make it work. Uh, there's also a very easy technique to center uh, the whole 3D world so that you can use things like Element 3D to actually insert 3D objects. I can go over that in another tutorial. Uh, but this, uh, this should get you started. Uh, oh, one other thing, uh, you can always, if you don't want all that contrast in your uh, footage, and you probably don't, you just need to open that composition, go up to uh, brightness and contrast, or I've already turned it off uh, while I was recording the tutorial. But you can turn off or just delete any of the color correction, or you can just replace the footage layer with, uh, uh, with your original footage. So I hope this helps, get you all straightened out, and uh, let me know if you have any other tracking questions.